Hello, I'm Nan Simonson, and I decided to play today. This is Memorial Day weekend, um, May 2021, and I bought something in September of 2020. Never used it, decided to get it out yesterday, and um, started playing with it. And I'm about to do some serious play, and I thought, I, I think I'll invite you in. Uh, why not? If it doesn't work, I'll edit it out. <laughs> if it does work, I will um, share it with you right now. Uh, again, my name is Nan Simonson, and in July of last year, I decided that I would write a book. I took a course called Launch Your Dream Book from the Institute of Integrative Nutrition in New York. I've actually taken five other courses from them, including my health coach health coach training course that began in 218 and was a year-long course after which I began working with Lifestyle Medical, a, a clinic here in Riverside, California. I've been with them for two and a half years helping patients with lifestyle as medicine becoming well. And that's what I do there. I work with patients, I work with groups, and I do cooking classes of whole food, plant-based eating. I am a whole food, plant-based eater, as is my husband. That means we don't eat animals of any kind or their products. So no milk, no cheese, no eggs, no butter, <laughs> no sheep, goats, cows, chickens, fish and we love it that way and we're healthier than ever. I just turned 70 and when I began that book in July, my goal was to have it finished by my birthday, which was the, the first part of January of 2021 and I did it. It was um, this book, Aging Powerfully, was published on December 27th, 2020. It is now May of 2021. And I'm telling you about this because when I was in my course, I bought this thing I'm telling you about in the middle of September of 2020, thinking, well, I'll add that to everything else I'm doing. Let me tell you something. If you're seriously writing a book and you have a deadline as I do, it came to the point where I was writing two hours a day and I had time for nothing else. So I didn't touch that until, what is this, seven months later? So what am I talking about? I am gonna make sushi. Have you ever gone to a sushi restaurant, had a few rolls, and left with a bill of 70 or $80? I certainly have. But what I eat doesn't even have their expensive fish on it because I don't eat fish. I don't eat any animal of any kind, as I said. So mine is the least expensive ingredients and they're still 70 or $80 for a couple of rolls. So I thought, let me make my own rolls. I got this kit from Amazon, Amazon and this was the least expensive kit. That was one that was 31, you can find it there. Another that was 24 and I got this one, $24. It's called the Isseve, I-S-S-E-V-E, -E, Sushi Making Kit. I have no affiliation with them. I, but I think it's a really neat thing because I hadn't even opened the box. So I opened the box. I got really brave and I thought, Nan, you're going to take this three day holiday and by golly, you're going to make sushi. And you know what we had with our lunch today? We had da 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 sushi. Yesterday I made black rice, what they call imperial rice. And we had it with a stir fry. And when I say fry, if you have seen any of my other videos, I my uh, water saute or broth saute, I never use oil in that way. And um, so I had this rice and so I tried to make the sushi of that. It worked all right, but it was a long grain rice and long grain rice doesn't stick well. But we still, with chopsticks, picked up our little rolls, dipped them in our, our I use tamari because that is the Japanese soy sauce that is gluten free and I stay away from gluten because I need to. And it, they were really good. So I thought, let's take this seriously and do it right. So I made sushi rice, short grain, and it's supposed to be short grain Japanese rice. I don't have Japanese rice. I use Lundgren's, which is a California uh, rice grower or processor or whatever, and they have been shown to have the lowest arsenic levels 
of United States rice and there's arsenic in the soils all over the US because they were once cotton growers or they used the feathers for fertilizer of chickens that were given arsenic to pink up their flesh. Crazy stuff goes on. That's why I like organic food. I could go on a tangent, but I won't. Uh, so what I did is I made some rice. It's supposed to be warm and it is warm. As soon as it finished, I put it in a flat container that allowed me to use, well, let me back up. Well, no, I'll go forward with that sentence and then I'll back up. I allowed me to use the paddle that they had. There were no instructions in this box. So I watched three videos on sushi making online. You go to YouTube, you go to sushi. I even Googled sushi making with the bazooka sushi maker and there it was. Because what this thing came with is this bazooka thing. And it's crazy, I'll, I'll tell you about it. But for $23, if I never use this, and I, I used it for Tay's lunch, I don't know if I'll use it again, but I'm gonna show you um, how I'm gonna use this. You know what? I mean, excuse me, I either stop this video or ask my husband who's at the other end of the kitchen for some help, and I'm gonna ask him for some help. I had to soak, as was the instruction, the mats that are used when you freehand make sushi. And I took them outside, well, I soaked them for six hours in warm water, the mats and the um, bamboo paddles, and I put the mats out to dry. Tim, would you grab me the two mats that are hanging on the back of that chair? Because that was an hour or so ago, they're gonna be dry. Because I'm gonna show you both things. I I'm sure, honey. <laughs> <laughs> this is so much fun. I was afraid you'd hear this. He is a CPA and a tax attorney and Mr. Serious. And during the week, he's all dressed up. And today he's in his grubs and he was out there drumming. He built when we married. Okay, here's the story. I was married 40 years. My husband passed away with esophageal cancer. Horrible. But a couple of years later, I met this new guy. Never thought that would happen. Never thought I wanted it to, and it did. And when we were gonna get together, I didn't wanna go into his big house. I had left a big house. Those were his arms. Come here, Timmy, do you wanna say hi around the corner? <laughs> I am really hanging loose. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Don't get silly. This is Tim. Anyway, so I didn't wanna go into another big house, so he came here. And so I've got my stuff here, which is kind of cool. And, um, Oh shoot, I had a point to make and now I don't remember it, darn it. Oh man, huh. Oh, and when he came, he converted a th two thirds of my garage to a soundproof room, a soundproof music room. Why? Because he spent a good part of his life, in spite of what else he was doing, CPA, tax attorney, as a drummer and a rock band. So he was out there rocking a little while ago. You really can't hear it much, but you can kind of hear the sort of percussion. And I thought, oh man, you're gonna hear it. But you didn't and he stopped and he came in to read and, and um, now there's no sound at all. So, okay. So this came with this crazy bazooka thing that I used for today's sushi, but I'm gonna show you the, the way that the Japanese do it using a mat. And I think I'm gonna like the mat better. Excuse me as I grab something that I didn't think to bring over, but I'm gonna show you the whole thing. So I watched these videos online and all of this was self-taught today. Um, so as I said, I'm playing and I'm inviting you into the kitchen uh, with me. So let's start with the bazooka. And it is, well, I saw somebody who ordered this online, but just got it in shrink wrap with, with um, Xerox copy instructions in French. And she said, I don't think it's the original. And when she opened it up, the thing just fell apart. Well, this can't fall apart. So she got some weird knockoff thing. Um, and this, she, it's, I don't know that, well, it's, it's, it's BPA free because I examined that when I ordered it on Amazon. So the materials are good. Um, and she said, well, I used it once, it worked okay, I'll probably go back to the old way, the, the um, 
traditional way, but I thought I'd show you what it came with. So it comes with this bazooka and there is a video online showing it with the bazooka and then I watched other people making sushi. It came with this knife that I like a lot. It is a super sharp knife with holes to help the, the knife slide through, although you still, when you use this, will probably want to have a glass of warm water near you and a cloth to wipe because the starch when you slice through your sushi is sticky and you want to be able to uh, get that off but so it came with this knife it came with a bag see I haven't even opened these but I saw this described online and it's a bag of um no, oh, I'm sorry. Of actually darling little, and somebody online, because I read the reviews of the product, somebody online said, I got these weird ducks. They're not weird, they're darling. And I don't even know what to do with them. Well, if you've eaten in an, well, I was gonna say, if you've eaten in an Asian restaurant, you know, that's not necessarily so. They, there's a pouch that comes with chopsticks and the little sticker on the, that holds the chopsticks together does come apart, it came off very easily. And these are your chopstick holders so that when you're eating with chopsticks, they're not directly laying back on the table because plates are picked up and taken away. And so you wanna have a place to put your chopsticks. So it came with four of these cute ducks, four sets of chopsticks the holder for the chopsticks if you want to keep them in there instead of a drawer and then sort of an end piece for this and so let me show you what I'm doing and then you'll see how the bazooka works you need something that you will have to get at the store and I just got it at if you have a Whole Foods Market a Sprouts a we have Clark's in Riverside California uh, there are there are a number of stores, and I would imagine possibly in the Asian section of markets, your conventional markets, you get something called nori sheets. And this says sushi, nori, toasted sea vegetable. Sea vegetables are wonderful for you because they give us the iodine. We used to get an iodine salt, but we don't use it anymore. You put the textured side down. No, it's shiny side down, so it's textured side up. All right, and this is what I'm gonna do. The rice, after it was cooked, while it was warm, required, in the traditional way, what we call sushi vinegar. Sushi vinegar, I saw many formulas. I heard a fellow in Japan talking about how sushi chefs have to get their sushi rice, which is seasoned with the sushi vinegar, perfect before they'll even graduate them to being able to make sushi with fish, um, which is sort of a graduation from making sushi with things that are less expensive and can be thrown away. And it's, it's an art. Um, I wouldn't know the difference, and so therefore, if this isn't as good as it could be, I wouldn't have known that. But let's, I pulled out the sushi sheet, the rice, as soon as it was finished, and this is short grain, Lundgren's short grain organic brown rice. I didn't want to use white rice. I like the, the um, I like brown rice and the fact that it is, has three times more fiber than, and it has more protein than white rice. And, and I do eat for nourishment, um, not just for hunger. And then, some called for a half a cup, some called for a third of a cup. Depending on what you use, I used a cup and a half of rice in my rice cooker with, what would that be? Um, cup and a half of rice, you double the, the water. Um, and so that was, well, a cup and a half would be three cups of water. Okay, so I'm gonna put in about a half a cup per side into, the bazooka, and they actually call it the bazooka. I'm not being uh, facetious because of the way it looks. 
kids would think this was cool and think it was some kind of a, a I don't know, boys would think it was some kind of a military thing. Girls would, who knows what they would think it was. Depends on their interests, huh? Okay, so about a half a cup, but I learned from this morning that if you don't pack it well enough, what you end up with is sushi that falls apart more easily. Plus I didn't have the stickiest of rice, so there you have it. All right, try to get some of the stickiness off my hands right now. Put it in and then, this is kind of fun, and this is why this is a, well, they said a very popular way of using this, or uh, making sushi, I don't know if that's so. You have this rod that we're going to use as a push tool. Well, it also acts as a way to create the well into which I'm going to put my um, foods, the, the condiments of the, or the contents actually, of the sushi. All right, so with this first roll, because I'm gonna do another roll and that's going to be with the, in the conventional method. And the first roll, I'm gonna put avocado. And what I did is I cut, got the seed out of an avocado, cut it in half, got the seed out, cut the halves into quarters, and then I'm going to take the skin. It comes off really easily if you do it with a from a quarter. Pull the skin off. This has been sitting here a while and it dried out a little. I could see the difference. And I'm going to cut this into thirds because I want a nice fat piece. I did it into skinny pieces for our lunch sushi and you could barely see the avocado. If I've got avocado, by golly, I want to know it because I love it. Now, there are some people, and I am one of them, who understand that in a whole food plant-based diet, we're eating vegetables, fruit, um, tubers, lots and lots of potatoes, lots of starch, uh, three quarters, two thirds, three quarters of what I eat is starch uh, from tubers, from grains, from legumes. Those are, well, especially the legumes are where we get a lot of our protein, but there's protein in everything we eat, even our greens. Um, I can eat fruits, vegetables, grains, tubers, legumes, ad libitum, meaning I can eat as much as I want to being full starting most meals with the, the, the vegetable half of the plate, um, and then, you know, not overdoing the, the starches, but having lots of starches at every meal, that's what keeps you full. That's the only way you keep full, stay full with a whole food plant-based diet. But I also have fat from avocados. I don't add oil to my food. So from avocado, seeds and nuts, and from the seeds, primarily flax and chia, I get my omega-3s, those long chain fatty acids. And so I eat fat in my food, meaning avocado, seeds, and nuts, but I don't overdo it because that's where you get into the much higher caloric density. So I wanted to add something besides the avocado that was actually a protein food, and I've been playing around with this. You're gonna see another video that's going to talk about tempeh. And I just discovered how to use tempeh. I've tried it three times, couldn't stand it. Well, I found a way that I really like it. The secret was in steaming it first. And look for that video. I'll be shooting it, gosh, by next week. Uh, no, in, in two, I'll be shooting it by the second week of, um, no, by the first, no, by the second week of June and I'm putting this air fried tempeh in here. So now I have avocado and I have tempeh, lots of protein. Now I'm putting slivers of green onion. That just meant I took a green onion, cut a piece of it, cut it down lengthwise. And then when you do that, you have it, it fans, it, you have a, a, 
multiple layers and you just cut through those and you get this wonderful, these thin sliced fans of uh, green onion. And then I have cucumber. I'm going to put some big pieces of cucumber. How did I do that? Peeled a cucumber, scooped out the seeds, laid it down and then cut it into slices. And slices are good rather than just slivers because you wanna be able to see it in here. There's slivers of onion, but the others are slices. And then one more thing, and I'm really packing this in, some red bell pepper. I'm gonna pack that on top of the avocado, and we're gonna see how pretty that is when it's finished. All right, now, that's that. I'm going to put it together. I'm gonna to squeeze it closed. See, I filled this much fuller than last time. <laughs> I hope I can close it. Come on, honey. <laughs> it's really hard to close. I wonder if I'm gonna to have to take a, a, a something off of there. Hold on a minute. See, as I said, you're here and we're playing. Okay. Come on, come on. Mm. Well, see, last time it closed too easily. And okay, I'm gonna take a, I don't think I can take a something. Okay, now let me get serious. I'm going to lightly scoop out what's in the way of the latch because there is, there is a congestion here. And see, because you're not measuring there, see, that's what it took. Because you're not measuring specifically, you're going to either go too little or too much in this way. Too little gave me a, um, a loose sushi this morning uh, for lunch and too, uh, too little was too, too loose and too much, you can't close it. Now I'm putting this end on and closing it down there. Come on, there, wait, mm. my hands are slippery. Okay, and now, oh, Nan, <laughs> I did something wrong. That's all right, I'm gonna fix it. I'm supposed to use the plunger and the plunger there is what allows me to push it out. See, look at how malleable this is. I'm working willy-nilly and it's still working for me. This is all very interesting. And I am literally playing. All right, I'm gonna take off this little bit. All right. Put this back on there. And the idea is that I'm pushing two, three, four, five. One of the videos said turn it five times, so I am. Now, I'm going to turn this, take this off. Lay out my nori. Remember, it was shiny side down. And I'm gonna end up wetting the nori, but we will do that once I have the, the um, roll on it. Okay, now watch this. I'm gonna just push it against me. Isn't that interesting? Oh. It's just finishing it off there. All right, we have a roll. I'm going to start it here and roll it. And when I get to the end, I'm gonna wet my fingers. 
with the end with this part and roll. Yeah, this is much firmer than last time. Now, I'm gonna make the other one and I'm going to do what the instructions, at least on the video, were. And that is that I'm going to let this sit for 10 minutes in the refrigerator because it will allow the, the roll to absorb some of the moisture from the rice and it will allow us to cut it better. Otherwise, as you can imagine, nori is rather crisp and it would tear or break more than it would slice. So, excuse me. All right, well, that was fun. Now this is where we get into traditional sushi making. And I'm glad you're with me because if you've never done any of this, you may watch this and say, you know what? I can do this. And if I had just watched somebody do it when I got this kit, maybe I wouldn't have had it seven months before I got around to doing anything with it. And our sushi was so good at lunch, even though it kind of fell apart, even though it wasn't really sushi rice, although it wasn't done properly, um, it was so good. We finished it off, even though we had our traditional lunch, Tim, a huge avocado sandwich on, on whole grain bread and air fried sliced potatoes and a big green salad, me, this huge salad. Um, even though we had all of that, we still had the sushi. So let me show you what I read to do. In the video, and I haven't done this, I told you, I'm just plain. So they, oh, well, that's a problem. The instructions were to use twice as much um, saran wrap as twice as long as the mat so that you can go on to the other side. Well, I can't do this, so let me think of how I should do this. Let me think, let me think. What's more important, being on the top or being on the bottom? I think being on the top is more important. Okay, and then I'll have some extending on the sides. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm going to put the nori down, and if you've, you've had sushi, then you know what the nori is. It's a sea vegetable. One of the most popular things, and my grandchildren who are seven and 10, eat them by the package, is the seaweed that you buy in a little pack and, and just eat the little squares of it. Um, and they're delicious. They're seasoned, lightly salted, and, and just delicious. All right, so let me turn it this way. All right, okay. So I'm gonna put the nori down, shiny side down, and let's see. I'm going to put the same amount. It's about a half a cup to three quarters, a half to three quarters of a cup of uh, the sushi rice, sushi rice being rice that has been seasoned with vinegar. If we did it in the traditional way, it would be vinegar, sugar, and salt. For example, one said a third of a cup of vinegar, two tablespoons of sugar, uh, a teaspoon of salt, yikes. When you're whole food plant-based and you pay attention to the people that I pay attention to, um, and you avoid using exogenous oils and fats, and you avoid piling on salt, and you don't use sugar, that's anathema. You're not gonna do that. So instead, I just used the, um, the vinegar. And the vinegar I used, organic, because so many things are sprayed if they're not organic. And this is a brood from organic rice, rice vinegar, um, Maricon brand, it doesn't really matter, but rice vinegar. I have a brown rice vinegar I like, that's also organic. And the instructions online were that you don't put it so thick that you can't see through to the, um, to the nori beneath. So I think I've pretty well done it right now. And you give yourself room to seal it at the bottom 
Oh, that's the bottom. Okay. All right. All right, let's do this. I'm going to build my own now. I don't have a little tube and I don't have a little trough to work with. And what am I going to make with it this time or make it out of this time? Well, for one thing, I'm going to use some different ingredients. I love the look of a bright carrot. So I have some shredded carrot. Just shreds of shredded carrot. I buy this for 99 cents in a bag, cleaned and shredded from Trader Joe's. They have them in a lot of stores. And I can shred carrot myself on my box grater or on my Cuisinart, but they're seldom in these kind of square julienne, perfect julienne pieces that stay so crunchy. So I use that because I like to have those. And then I have some sugar snap peas. Love sugar snap peas. These could have been snow peas. And I'm gonna do some strips of the sugar snap pea. And they are a low calorie, high fiber source of protein, not huge amounts of protein, but decent amount. And so I'm going to put some slices of sugar snap pea for dinner tonight, and actually I'm gonna be filming it right after I film this. So if you see the video, I may be in the same thing, or sometimes I'll throw a scarf on and I'm gonna do a video right afterwards so that they kind of look different. I don't know why I'm telling you all that, but um, I'm gonna do tonight's dinner, which is a mound, a, a pillar of polenta with a mushroom saute over it with cremini and porcini mushroom and some tomato and it's again an experiment because i haven't made it yet but it looks fabulous i can usually tell from recipes and this isn't going to go at all so we may eat this tomorrow or maybe we'll have some today i don't know i'm going to put a little cucumber because the cucumber has this just wonderful fresh flavor and i can't overfill it or i'll be Sorry, it's like a burrito. You overfill it and you can't, um, <laughs> you can't go back. Uh, thing falls apart on you. And you know, I think this knife is lovely. I don't know if it's carbon steel. It might be, I don't know. But it's very sharp. You can kind of tell when you take a knife and rub it against your nail, uh, you know, going sideways. You can tell if a knife has a nice sharp, sharp edge. I have a honing steel. I can continue to sharpen it. I like this thing. All right even though the one person on the, the review said, oh, and they have a knife in it that you could have gotten from a 99 cent store. I thought that was snarky. <laughs> I didn't agree. All right. And now I'm cutting through and I'm giving myself some slices of sweet potato. This is Japanese sweet potato. There's a Hannah yam that has a white inside that's much more, I'm gonna call it slick and syrupy when it's cooked. The Japanese sweet potato is a little drier and starchier. And so I am using that one there. I think, mm, that's so nice. I'm sorry, I got carried away. <laughs> I'm not gonna throw this away, I'm gonna save it, okay. And I still want a little avocado. So I might be over overfilling it. Rule number one, don't overfill. See how easy it is to do an avocado when you, you quarter it first or eighth it or third it. And then these slices, look at these beautiful slices of avocado. Okay, this may be too fat to even roll. Fingers crossed, let's do this. Here we go. I'm gonna wet this end. I'm gonna take this, and this is the value of this mat. Take the mat and press and push and press. And I'm gonna keep the cellophane from being integrated. It's just there to make it not stick to the mat. 
and I'm pushing and pressing as I turn it. This is going really well, people. It's a really fat sushi roll, but I'm able to compress it. I heard an analogy today and it was a great one. I was listening to Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook describe and she was with two other friends in Chef AJ's kitchen on a video making sushi. And the one person described it as, as you push and you tighten, as rolling up a sleeping bag where you push the air out as you're, as you're rolling so that you get this big fluffy thing into a nice tight roll. Well, I need to do that or we're not gonna get this thing sealed because I've got so much in here. Now, before I finish, I'm wetting my fingers to pack in the other end. And I finished my roll. Hey, this feels really good. I don't think it's as tight as it could and should be. Um, <laughs> and it spewed out of the back end. <laughs> One of the sweet potatoes. That's very funny. All right. Okay, look at this cutie. So what I'm gonna do is take my clean because there's no food on it mat and I'll wipe that off. I don't have to wash it off. I'm going to cut off the two ends. I probably should do it after I let it set, but I'm just gonna do it now. And I'm gonna show you the other one and put this in to rest. And remember what I said? It will absorb the moisture into the um, nori. Hey, people, this is really cute. Can you imagine, now this is why I'm even bringing this up. Can you imagine how much fun you can have with this, knowing it's that easy? Um, that kit came with two mats, this thin inside of the bamboo plant, bamboo mat, and this thicker outside bark of the bamboo plant mat. Sushi chefs prefer the thicker one and beginners prefer the thinner one. I use the thicker one. And it came in this kit. And this paddle came in the kit. And a bamboo paddle thinner paddle came in the kit uh, to help me spread it, but I just spread it with my wooden, or with my, my spoon. Uh, $23, that's ridiculous, I think. And do you agree we really don't need the bazooka because that, that I was constrained by that. I didn't know how much was too much until I overfilled it. Well, this one, the same thing. It, it kind of let out its parts. So, let me show you what I have here. I have a little container and, and prepping in advance is very helpful. I have a little container of a dipping sauce that I made out of tamari, some red pepper, some date paste because I didn't want to use sugar. Um, a lot of the dipping sauces have a little bit of sweetness to them. Good, fresh grated ginger, tiny bit of garlic. Oh, you know what would have been good? Let me show you. My husband will do this, wasabi paste. And actually, probably the wasabi paste would be separate because a lot of people will dip their chopsticks into the wasabi paste and then mix it into their own container of dipping sauce. So let's see what we can do here. So remember, this is the one that I did, oh, at least 10 minutes ago, 12 minutes ago. Let it sit for at least 10 minutes. Oh. I'm going to freshen things up. If you don't mind, use my bath. All right. We'll get the rice out of the way. We're finished with that. 
have a little cloth that you can wipe your hands when you have them, them when they're sticky, then you can wipe the knife. All right, and uh, this knife cuts nicely. When I show you this, you're gonna say to yourself, I would have paid $15 for that at my little sushi place. You know, I have a lot of friends who love sushi. Oh gosh, I hope I don't get in trouble for this. I'm not judging, I'm making a statement. Who love sushi, and I worry a lot about them because, okay, now I'm getting into dangerous territory. We used to eat fish because fish was so healthy. The omega-3s were good for us, and they are good for us. The problem is that the dirtiest protein that we can get now, one of, now family farming's made them dirtier, and farmed fish is hideously filthy with the, the anti-parasitics and the antibacterial and the antibiotics they put in the water. But the oceans are full of plastics. The oceans are full of PCBs. The oceans are a mess. Um, and we are fishing into almost extinction, the big game fish, and they're full of parasites. Well, if it's, especially if it's the, at, in most sushi restaurants, especially well-priced ones, you're going to get farmed fish and they are full of parasites. And they have shown that this is affecting us terribly. The mercuries are affecting us. People who eat a lot of sushi get, get tested, are, have high levels of mercury. The mercury can work itself out of our system sometimes. If it's too high, it takes a long, long time. It affects us, it affects our brains, it affects our nervous system. So quite frankly, fish sushi is not ideal. So why not make our own out of all kinds of fun ingredients like this? And I'll do one more slice and then I'll show you what we've created. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'm gonna take a couple of these away and I'll bring back even though it hasn't sat long enough, I'll bring back my other ones and then you can see what we do and we'll call it a day. See, this actually is really quite pretty. This was the one I did with the, <laughs> I keep calling it the bazooka, but the form, well actually they call it the bazooka, so I can too, that's not being funny. That's, oh, and the one that I did this morning should I show you? Yeah, I'm gonna show you. I would have had this here, but I didn't think about it. I'm going to lightly dampen the outside of the roll. I keep toasted sesame seeds ready for numerous things. I'm going to sprinkle them very lightly. And then I'm gonna roll my roll on the sesame seeds. There, look at this. Isn't that pretty? Look. Not pretty? All right. And now I'll cut it. Yep, this isn't as um, firm as maybe it should be. Dip this. So have your little bits of equipment with you. The water to dip, the towel to wipe off. Oh, but you know what? That's really quite nice. And think of the things we could have put in here. Every time you make a roll, you could vary it with the vegetables that you like. Avocado, I think, is a nice hit because, oh, well, because you want some fat in your food, that's where you get your satisfaction. But you could have had, we could have had, well, we did have um, tempeh. This one just fell apart. We have tempeh. We could have had uh, traditional tofu, baked tofu that you simply sliced into small slices. Um, look at this. 
This is really nice. Okay, all right, I'm bringing it to you and then we're gonna call it a day. I could put this on a table at a restaurant. I'm gonna turn the camera down and show you. Look. I could put this on a table at a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> and you would think, wow, can't wait. I'm glad I'm here. And happily, for those two rolls, the two rolls you just saw me make that cost me, well, I think the nori might have been $8, and this suet, and there were seven sheets, and I used two. So what is that? That's almost a dollar a sheet. So I used $2 worth of nori and a bunch of little vegetables that I had around in my tempeh. I used a fraction of a package of tempeh and a fraction of everything, and the rice is almost free, almost. Um, it costs next to nothing to make with the dipping sauce. Um, let me grab, oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking for chopsticks. Well, it looks so much better when I pick this up with chopsticks, but I, I'm not going to pick them up off the floor, at least not while you're watching. <laughs> oh, shoot. And I dip it in. Come over. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, my goodness. That's really good. <laughs> With that, I'll say, please consider reading my book, Aging Powerfully is about a struggle I had through most of my adult life with an eating disorder. My having broken away from that almost three years ago and my working with people and my teaching people in this book, it's actually a, a resource, um, how to live with the tenets of lifestyle medicine considering how lifestyle can, mm, sorry, can be medicine and can keep you from pills and procedures that I at 70 see with almost all of the people I know my age, but don't intend to live like that. I intend, as I explain in Aging Powerfully, to go through another 10, 20, 30 years in health that's strong enough that I can still enjoy every day, knock on wood. Um, but with a whole food plant-based diet, that's what we're finding. That's what the environmental working group, that's what the World Health Organization, that's what the College of Lifestyle Medicine, and I'll call it woke doctors realize. Living a whole food plant-based diet with the tenets of lifestyle as medicine can keep us going for decades. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day because I know I'm going to. Bye-bye.